Let's continue now to talk about functional harmony by talking about predominant function. So far, we've talked about harmony as being stable and unstable. There are stable pitches, one, three, and five. There are unstable pitches, two, four, six, and seven. Um, likewise, there are stable chords and unstable chords. Most unstable would be the dominant chord, the five chord, because it has scale degree seven in it. And uh, the tonic chord, which has scale degree one as its root, would be the most stable. The story of music is we start at home and we go away from home and have an adventure and then we come back again. Well, melody can imply all of those parts of a good story as we go three, two, one, yeah, but uh, the, it, the harmony that backs it up also can uh, create that same thing. So I guess we could illustrate it with a harmonica as much as anything. When you blow out, the harmonica plays one, three, and five. When you draw in, when you breathe in, um, you get two, four, six, and seven. Even not getting the notes right, just get this combination of different notes um, on the harmonica, and we'll have that sense of uh, stable and unstable. Stable and unstable. Perhaps you could tell whether I was breathing in or out. You know when a person is on a diving board and they're jumping off, what's going to happen? Because gravity's going to take over and inevitably there will be a splash at the end. So the five chord, the unstable chord, is the leap. And you can do a lot of things while you're in the air. You might uh, um, flip, you might... Uh, uh, go head first, you might go foot first, you might do a cannonball, a lot of things you could do, but you only have a short amount of time before you're going to hit the water as you're heading toward the inevitable splash. Um, here's another example, three blind mice. If we go stable, unstable, stable. So we started stable, we went away from home, we came back again, and the whole thing was just that story. Play it on a harmonica you can't miss, because it's all just those harmonies. So there may be some other songs that are only made up of tonic and dominant functions. Here we go, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I could hit any of the notes just playing sloppy, but you can tell whether it's a uh, tonic or whether it's dominant, function, stable, or unstable. But those are very simple, very short songs. And in order to sustain an interest, we kind of need another chord. What we need is something that sets up the dominant. If all we're doing is very closely being home and away, home, away, home, away, at some point, we want to get the next generation out where we're not just inevitably falling. We need to climb up to the diving board. So we go up the ladder, perhaps a high dive, and uh, that, that tension of going against gravity and uh, being up there sets up that five chord that then winds up back in the water. But there's also this motion that got us up there in the first place. That is this predominant function, the diver climbing up. You have to break gravity in order to make the natural fall of a dive happen in the first place. 
We're going to use uh, Roman numerals just a little bit more now uh, to help distinguish between whether we're talking about a chord or a scale tone. So let's talk about a song that uses a one, four, five, one chord loop. Whose father I adore you. One, four, five, one, three, one, four, five, one, one, four, five, one. Now maybe you know that song, but the whole thing is this loop of a predominant function. Actually, it's a two chord um, that then goes to the five chord and then goes to one. Do you feel that? Another example is happy birthday song. We start stable. There, we would need that other, it's a four chord right there that we're needing. And then we're back home on. So it's that dear, da, da, it's that four chord that helps to set up the final sprint back to one, five, one. So if we're talking in terms of pitches, the tonic is one, three, five. The dominant is five, seven, two, and four. And then the predominant is uh, something that involves four and six, and maybe one, and maybe two. In any case, there's that four chord that goes to the five, seven chord that goes to the one chord. So now let's try your tune. See if there's a place when you're just talking in terms of which scale degrees are in there. Is there a spot that would be best used with four and six and perhaps imply a predominant chord? Well, now we're continuing in uh, 10 Essentials for Musicians to talk about functional harmony. This would be the minor chords that are also part of the uh, diatonic scale. So, so far we had uh, a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord. In other words, scale degree one, three, five, four, six, one, and five, seven, two. All of those are major triads, but there are also triads built on scale degrees two, three, and six that are all minor chords. So two, in the key of C would be a D minor chord. Three would be an E minor chord. Six would be an A minor chord. A minor chord has a different kind of feel than a major chord, and it's part of that, maybe even beyond the predominant function, it's part of the color chords that are out there somewhere. You can hear it, you can tell, that's a, that's a different kind of chord. It's not just that uh, very simple major chord. It's got a little more complexity to it. Well, remember our diving board illustration. You climb the ladder, you go to the edge of the board. Uh, that's the predominant function that sets up the actions about to unfold, which is the, uh, the dive, which is the five chord, and then the splash, which is the one chord. There's tension, there's drama, there's beauty, there's dissonance. We're away from home by being up in the air. That's the dominant function, which invariably ends in a return home or a resolution of the conflict, or you splash into the water. That's the tonic function. But music is usually more complex than that. When we don't have just a very, very simple folk song, uh, we need a bit more of an adventure when we're away from home. Can you hear the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? It's parallel minor, fairly easy to hear when they're one next to the other. How about the two, three, and six? Can you hear those as minor? It brings a new color to the palette. So if planet tonic is home and its gravitational pull eventually brings us back and that's uh, within the atmosphere and uh, four then is in orbit around the, the uh, planet tonic. By the time you get some minor chords, it's actually beyond the gravitational pull of the planet. It could go a lot of different directions rather than heading right back home again. That'll be it for us in this course with regard to functional harmony. So we have chords built on one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're ignoring seven for right now because that doesn't come up very often. When we get to practical theory one, that's when we'll go into that in more detail.